BYD has expanded its electric car range by introducing three new variants of the BYD seal. This comes as a part of BYD's strategy to offer more options to consumers and make electric mobility more accessible, uh, which I think they've done quite well at so far, if you think about the, the different cars they've already put on, on the market for us. The new variants were revealed in Australia, showcasing a cheaper base version alongside other models, broadening the spectrum of choices for potential buyers. Uh, I also I also learned something pretty interesting about the BYD seal that I'll go over in just a couple of seconds. It's crazy, isn't it? This year seems to have just flown by, completely just flown by. And some people say that it's something that happens as you get older and time feels like it goes quicker because uh, each year represents a smaller portion of your time alive so far. Something like that anyway. And it's all just happening so fast, isn't it? You know, and now in Brisbane, th literally every day I see different types of EV on a daily basis. Just a few years ago, that was not the case. There wasn't even, you know, a Tesla Model S on the streets anywhere. And global EV sales are up 35% from last year in the first six months of this year, which is, I, I just think is astonishing, isn't it? BYD aimed to sell 3 million cars or vehicles, I should say, this year, and Toyota are aiming to have sold 3.5 million pure EVs by the end of this decade. They only sold 24,000 last year, so things are just rocketing along and things are just really changing very quickly. BYD has sold well over 10,000 Atto 3s in Australia now, and the Dolphin is now on sale. Uh, they will start arriving in the coming weeks and months, and also the BYD seal is literally at our doorstep. So let's talk about what you'll get in Australia and also the UK. So did you know that the BYD seal has the same drag coefficient now as the Tesla Model 3 apparently? So it's 0 0.219 CD and that is fantastic. I'll run through some basics for you and then I'll give you a run through of the basic spec or specs for each three versions that are on offer. So the base model for the SEAL will have a range of 460 kilometers WLTP, which you should be fine to get if you drive steady on the motorway at 95 or 100 kilometers per hour. And it will also have a single motor at the rear with 0 to 100 kilometers per hour time of 7.5 seconds. So it's nippy. I'd say it's, it's a nippy car. I wouldn't say fast, I'd say nippy or maybe I'd say sprightly, as I'm English. I'll say that, sprightly. Um, it offers DC charging uh, of 150 kilowatts, and BYD say, for some reason, it can charge mostly in 26 minutes. Vague, but that's what they said. BYD's proprietary DISUS, or D-I-S-U-S, -S, intelligent body control system is engineered in-house to offer custom damper settings across four different drive modes. So that enhances the control over both lateral and vertical movement uh, while ensuring that you have optimal suspension compliance levels. Apparently, that's what I say. Sounds pretty cool. Um, I haven't driven one, so I can't, can't vouch for this either. Uh, to mitigate or entirely prevent traction loss during high load conditions, the SEAL also incorporates the ITAC intelligence Intelligence Torque Adaptation Control technology uh, serving as BYD's rendition of torque vectoring, basically. Uh, so every variant of the SEAL comes equipped with a comprehensive array of advanced driver systems, systems uh, in brackets, abbreviated as ADAS. Uh, a standard feature in the BYD now. Uh, this suite includes autonomous emergency braking, both going forwards and also if you're reversing, rear cross traffic alert assist, uh, lane, lane keep assist, and emergency lane keep assist. Standard features include a 12 speaker, 775 watt Dyn, Dyn Audio sound system, and an eight way power adjustable driver's seat with uh, a four way power adjustment for the front passenger seat, and a four way power adjustable steering wheel and lumbar adjustability, which is an important thing, lumbar adjustability in four different ways, 
for the top tier version, which is the all wheel drive variant uh, to make sure that you have a good comfy ride when you're going quite quickly in the corners. Uh, the front seats in both the mid and the top spec variants come with the luxury of heating and ventilation, but it's not cooling, it's just ventilation, so it's just waft air on your bone crack, basically. Uh, they will have a huge 1.9 meter panoramic glass on the roof, so nice and cheap if that goes crap. Uh, the seals front doors are double glazed, enhanced, uh, enhancing heat and sand insulation. I don't know about the windscreen, but I know that the front, front side, do the front doors are double glazed. The rear glass is single pane, uh, but tinted for sun protection. It will come in the following exterior shades. So you have Arctic Blue, Atlantis Grey, Polar White, Cosmos Black, Shark Grey. So basically, you know, blue, black, white, grey. <laughs> and the interior has a choice between two trim colours. The limited edition Tahiti Blue, blue, uh, for a vibrant touch and a timeless black for a sleek look. I think they call it Tormus. Timeless black. Strange word. Uh, the standard dynamic range variant is equipped with a single motor rear wheel drive powertrain delivering 150 kilowatts of power, so that's 201 horsepower, capable of accelerating 0 to 100 in seven and a half seconds. And it has a WLTP range, like I said earlier, 460 kilometers, making it a good, reliable choice for daily commuters, I think. Uh, stepping up a little bit to the mid range premium extended range variant that amplifies the power to 230 kilowatts. So that's 310 horsepower directed to the rear wheels. And then the 0 to 100 is 5.9 seconds with a notable WLTP range of 570 kilometers. And it's designed for those extra miles on the road. So if you're going long cruisy distances. Uh, the performance all wheel drive version harnesses 390 kilowatts of power, so that's 522 horsepower of power. So that's courtesy of 160 kilowatt motor at the front and then 230 at the back. So that means that 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.8 seconds, and it offers a range of 520 WLTP. And I think the reason the range is not higher than that is because. A, it's WLTP, so it's a little bit realistic if you just stick to driving 90 or 100 kilometers per hour on the motorway, and B, it's a fairly big battery, so it's quite heavy. I think that blends performance with decent mileage, I think. So for different driving conditions, you have four drive modes. You've got Eco for fuel efficiency, or fuel efficiency, electric efficiency, uh, Normal for balanced performance, Sport for a sprightly drive, and snow for enhanced traction on slippery terrains. So you can put sl snow on even if it's gravel, actually, but it's, it's called the snow snow mode. And I would I would expect the price to be around sixty thousand Aussie dollars, maybe just over. And I really will be shocked if it's less. Then you will have on the road costs on top of that, and then a possible rebate. Interestingly, I did run uh, a, a, a poll a couple of weeks ago and ask you all if you think it will be cheaper or more expensive than a Model 3. Put in the comments now, pause it, put in the comments, what do you think it was? 72% think it was cheaper. So most people think it's going to be cheaper. I really don't think so. Nothing suggests, there's no evidence to suggest it's going to be cheaper at all. And especially when you put in, there's going to be a bit of greed when they, the importer, the importer want a piece, a piece of the, the pie, you know? So when you convert the Chinese prices and then you bring it over to Australia, stick a little bit of profit on it, uh, pay your stamp duty, stuff like that, you definitely don't end up at the right set of $60,000, I don't think. So just my opinion. They haven't released the price yet, so I don't know. And they're also getting rid of the Build Your Dreams badges on the back. And I think, I think they did say they will keep it on some vehicles but not all of them. I can't remember which ones or which one. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be a tough decision, I think, for anyone in two minds. So if you just like Tesla, you might, you'll just get a Tesla. If you just like BYD, you'll just get a BYD. But if you're someone uh, a bit like me, you, you, you'd be a bit torn in between them. I'd probably still get a BYD, to be honest. 
because they will be very closely matched. And I think the Tesla does actually have access to the supercharger network, and it's more integrated in the in the in the computer, obviously. So, uh, what will be interesting is the Tesla Model Two, which won't be called the Model Two. So that should be released next year, and then we should be able to actually go buy one and then start seeing them on the roads around 2025 to 2026, something like that. And I think that will be maybe around $40,000 in Australia and then on road costs minus any rebate. So dare I say the word rebate. What an awful word these days, isn't it? Uh, it's a sour subject these days, actually. And a week ago, I ran my last poll again. I do interesting polls sometimes. Almost half of you said that you think rebates make EVs more expensive, which is interesting. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I hope that was interesting for you. And uh, thank you to the people who support on Patreon, YouTube memberships, buy me a coffee. And the easiest way to help is by pressing the like button. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm really interested to know what you've got to say, especially if you've got loads to say, and it's like a big interesting comment. I like those ones. Uh, and I'll get back to you. I read my comments as well. So.